Blue Lock players all possess unique weapons and skills that allow for them to be a threat on whatever team that they play on. But what is each player truly able to do with the weapons in their arsenal? For today's arsenal video, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different than I did in the previous ones. I'm not simply going to be covering one blue locker, nor will I be technically covering any blue locker. Because in today's video, I will be covering every single professional player's weapons that have been shown in the blue lock series as of right now in the story. Meaning any professional player that we have seen play, I'll be covering the arsenals of every single one of those players. Now this video will not be including new gen 11 players, just current professional players, such as the world 5 players and the NAL coaches. Meaning no Kaiser, no Sai, and no Lorenzo, because they're going to be getting their own arsenal videos very soon. Before I begin, I want to make it clear to everyone that the latest chapter of the manga as of me writing the script for this video is chapter 251, meaning if more pro players or weapons get revealed in the series, which they most likely will, they won't be included in this video because those chapters have just not come out yet. But now without further ado, spoilers for the Blue Lock manga up to chapter 251, and if you are not caught up to that chapter, click off this video now because there will be spoilers. Now it only feels fair to start with the number one player in the world in Blue Lock, that being Noel Noah. Looking at Noah's playstyle and archetype, his playstyle is that of the complete forward. Complete forwards are strikers with great technical ability, clinical finishing, and physical strength, enabling them to fulfill multiple roles on the pitch. They can link up with and play with others, fashion chances for themselves, or finish off team moves by holding up the ball. Now these strikers are best often given the opportunity to play as they wish, without rigid tactical instruction as their versatility allows for them to be very fluid on the pitch. Now looking at Noah's weapons, his first core weapon is called Supreme Physicality, first revealed in chapter 165 of the manga. With a supreme and well-balanced physicality as a base and the skill that comes from being completely ambidextrous, Noah is a player that has unlimited options. He can act as a starter for any play, connect with his teammates, and finish off plays with little difficulty difficulty even when faced against players on par with his skill level. His next core weapon is called Ambidexterity, also first shown in chapter 165 of the manga. Noah is completely and evenly ambidextrous with his feet, allowing for him to dribble, trap, pass, faint, and shoot the ball with either foot at any angle with the same level of power and accuracy on either side. Now Noah also has a branched weapon in his arsenal known as the Machine Dribble, branching off from his supreme physicality weapon and like the other skills, shown in chapter 165 of the manga. Noah's dribble style involves him moving forward efficiently with the ball with pure speed and power. The reason for this dribble style being called the Machine Dribble is simply due to the efficiency of his dribbling, leaving no room for error as if a machine was directing his movements. And his last weapon is actually an evolved skill called All-Powerful Shot, a combination of his supreme physicality and ambidexterity weapons, and as you can probably guess, was also first shown in chapter 165 of the manga. With Noah's ambidexterity and his top physicality, Noah is able to make any kind of shot with either foot, being able to constantly feint while switching feet and finish off a play with a shot that does not lose power or accuracy from using both feet in tandem. And as of now in the story, those were all of Noah Noah's skills that we know of. Next up, following the number one, we have the number two player in the world, Chris Prince. Looking at Prince's playstyle, his playstyle is known as the Target Man. Target men are strikers or central forwards that generally have a high degree of physical strength and are usually tall in height. They are able to make space, score goals, or hold up play with the ball waiting for support no matter how much pressure defenders are putting on them. They specialize in taking and controlling the ball in the air or along the ground often from long passes with the strength to hold off defenders while receiving said long passes and sometimes volleying the ball. Being a tall player with a perfect physical body and the confidence and awareness to do whatever he wants with it, Chris is able to expertly mark even the best of players into a corner, receive the ball in a pressured situation, and still be able to make space for a shot and take one while being pressured by Noah Noah himself and Bastard Munchen's rationality. Now looking at his weapons, Chris Prince only has two confirmed weapons. The first is known as Perfect Physicality, first shown in chapter 193 of the manga. With the personalized training he developed himself in order to strengthen his strongest attributes, Chris acquired a body of high caliber, reaching the maximum stats and everything in the parameters of Blue Lock. His physical prowess is so great that during the match against Bastard Munchen, he easily kept up with Kaiser, even pressuring him when getting serious, something that no one else has been able to do. His other confirmed weapon is the Illogical Knuckleball, first shown in chapter 194 of the manga. In order to surpass Noah Noah, Chris does a knuckleball that is so random that neither he nor the goalkeeper know where the shot will actually land. And with that, those are all of the weapons in Chris Prince's arsenal as of right now in the story. Now next up we have the dancer of Barcha, Lavinho. Looking at Lavinho's playstyle, he is defined as the dribbler. Dribblers are players known for their close ball control ability that is used to get past defenders by a sudden change of direction and acceleration, sometimes combined with their great pace. The skill is used to create opportunities for other attackers or to score themselves, having broken through the opponent's defensive line 
using what is sometimes referred to as trickery. Now looking at his weapons, the first one in his arsenal is called the Perfect Dribble, first shown in chapter 164 of the manga. Levino has immense mastery with the ball, managing to dribble it from any position with creative and fluid dribbles. His dribbling style is so high that when opponents try to block him, they end up falling to the ground for not following his dance with the ball, managing to easily advance to the goal without losing possession. Now similarly to Bacha's dribbling style, as well as his arsenal video, which you should go check out by the way, Lavinho's dribbling evolves in stages. The second confirmed stage of his dribbling is called Jenga style, also first shown in chapter 164 of the manga. Lavinho employs the Jenga concept of capoeira into his soccer style, which makes him create a mental image of himself as a butterfly flying across the field and with that mental image, he manages to develop flexible and unpredictable dribbles that only the best striker in the world can actually follow. Now branching off from this second stage of dribbling, Lavinho has a single branched weapon which is called Rising Dance, like the other skills also first shown in chapter 164 of the manga. In a 2 on 1 situation, Lavinho first does a rainbow flick to get past one opponent and then uses that same opponent as a wall to stop the other one from pursuing him. We see him do this against Isagi and Noah Noah in the Barcha match, allowing for Lavinho to break past Noah using Isagi as a wall for Noah to have to move around. Now as of the current chapter, those were all of the confirmed skills in Lavinho's arsenal. Now next up we have the crown messenger of Ubers, Mark Snuffy. Starting with his playstyle, Snuffy also shares the same archetype as Noah Noah, being the complete forward. However, because you already heard me explain what that archetype is, I'm not going to do it again. Now also like Noah Noah, Snuffy's first weapon is called Supreme Physicality, first shown in chapter 222 of the manga. The core of Snuffy's playstyle is Jiu Jitsu, and because of this, Snuffy's already world class hold up plays and ball retention skills became even more refined along with his passing and scoring ability. Core training, biomechanics, close combat, Snuffy incorporated these principles of Jiu Jitsu and fused them into his football style. This ultimately makes him a more versatile and flexible striker, with Noah Noah even in admitting that in terms of overall ability, Snuffy is the best player in the world. The difference between Snuffy's supreme physicality is that Snuffy combines three techniques to create this ability, being physique, ball keeping, and jujitsu. And the other core weapon that Snuffy possesses is Metavision, also first shown in chapter 222 of the manga. Snuffy was able to block and anticipate Izuki's movements. He is also shown to have the Metavision Eye design, asserting that rather than Isagi, he was the one controlling the entire game with his playmaking skills. Now it would be fair to assume that Snuffy has awakened Metavision and is conscious of this ability, the same as Kaiser and Isagi, as opposed to Nico or Aiku, who have yet to fully understand what Metavision actually is. But as of right now, those were all of the weapons in Snuffy's arsenal. Now next up we have the Sion of Real Madrid, Leonardo Luna. And because Luna hasn't played enough to get a full explanation as to his playstyle, we don't actually have an applicable title for his playstyle. Aside from this though, we do have a few weapons to look at that are confirmed. The first is Professional Football Technique, first shown in chapter 92 of the manga. Now this weapon is more of a standard understanding as he was one of the players handpicked by Ego to represent the World 5 team, considering he is one of the best players for Spain's current national team. The next weapon that he possesses is Dribbling, like the others, first shown in chapter 92 of the manga. Luna's dribbling is a key weapon in his arsenal. With his great reflexes and insight, he spots the opponent's weak spots and easily breaks past them. Now this dribbling weapon also has a branched weapon called Hyperspeed Scissors, again shown in chapter 92 of the manga. Luna performs a scissors feint at incredible speeds, making it very hard to follow his movements. Now Luna isn't the only player that we've actually seen perform this technique, as we've seen Bachata perform this move numerous times during the series. Now this last weapon is one that you could debate on, however I am more than confident that it's true. We have Predator Eye, shown in chapter 92 of the manga. Now I know you may not consider what I'm about to explain as Predator Eye, but hear me out. Predator Eye is designated as the complete opposite of Metavision. It's a technique that involves narrowing one's vision on a singular person in order to win a 1v1 situation, but waiting for a moment of hesitation or comfortability, allowing for the user to defeat them. We see Baro do this in the NEL, however I would simply say that this was just an application of this ability. The bottom line is that Predator Eye can be used in a 1v1 situation with any player, simply given the description of its ability. Meaning in this situation where Luna Nutmeg Lean, he was using Predator Eye in this exact moment. The only reason that he doesn't have the Predator Eye shape is simply because that this action here was the focal point for Predator Eye's creation later in the series. But as of now, those are all of the weapons in Luna's arsenal. Now next up is the heavy tank himself, Dada Silva. Now like Luna, we haven't seen enough of Silva in order to calculate a player archetype, however we do have some confirmed weapons. The first is Superior Physicality, first shown in chapter 91 of the manga. Dada possesses one of the strongest physiques in the World 5 team, managing to pressure the other blue lock players with ease. With it, he easily dominated Aryu in a jumping contest by pressing away from the ball while hitting it. His second weapon is called High Jumping Power, also first shown in chapter 91 of the manga. Dada has an enormous jumping ability, managing to stop balls in midair with headers. Combined with his superior 
physique, he easily overcomes Jubei Aryu, one of the best players in Blue Lock whose specialty is jumping, stealing all the balls he tried to stop during the match. Branching off from this weapon, we have two branch skills. The first is called Jumping Header, first shown in chapter 91 of the manga. Dada jumps to catch a ball launched in the air, performing a headbutt to launch it for a teammate to score a goal. We see Dada Silva use this technique to beat out Aru in a height battle in order to send a pass to Adam Blake. And his other branch skill is called the Raid Dive Header, also branching off from his high jumping power weapon, first shown in chapter 92 of the manga. Dada jumps and steals the ball from another player who tries to catch the ball in the air, delivering a powerful header to send the ball straight into the goal. And with that, those were all of the confirmed weapons and techniques we have in Dada Silva's arsenal. Next up is Adam Blake, also known as the Gold Junkie. Now what is interesting is that we apparently have no definitive weapons for Adam Blake, nor do we have a confirmed player archetype or playstyle. Looking at his performance though, my guess is that he is a physical based weapon, something akin to Chris Prince's perfect physicality, or even a skill such as solid muscle density as he was able to easily overpower Tokimitsu during the World 5 match. But yeah, unfortunately we have no confirmed weapons or player archetype for Adam Blake as of right now in the story. But next up we have Argentina's most adorable free kicker, Pablo Cavasso. Now Pablo actually does have some weapons that are confirmed, however like the other World 5 members, no player archetype or confirmed playstyle. For his first weapon however, Pablo possesses professional football technique, first shown in chapter 91 of the manga. Now there isn't a definitive reason as to whether Pablo's weapon is different than Luna's considering they are the exact same weapon but I'm going to assume that they are either identical or closely relative to each other. The only other weapon that he is confirmed to have is called the Vertical Spinning Shot, first shown in chapter 92 of the manga. Cavazos is able to perform a shot that curves in random directions, targeting at random spots at the goal, and this shot can easily fool the goalkeeper due to the random curves of the ball. Now as of now in the story, those were all of the confirmed weapons in Pablo Cavazos' arsenal. Next up, we have the God Sprinter himself, Julian Loki. Now unlike the other World 5 members, we actually do have a confirmed player archetype and playstyle for Loki, which is known as the Counter-Attacker. Counter-Attackers are any player that uses their pace to beat defenders and cause unexpected scoring opportunities at any time. Another player who shares this archetype is Chigade, who, like Loki, is also a speedster. Now, the first main weapon in Loki's arsenal is called, you guessed it, Professional Football Technique. You probably thought I was going to say speed, right? <laughs> wrong. But yeah, anyways, his first weapon is called Professional Football Technique, first shown in chapter 91 of the manga. Loki is considered one of the best strikers in the world, being handpicked by Ego to play as one of the world's select. Despite only being 17, he is already a rising star and is considered a prodigy in the world of football, having been selected for France's national team already and playing professional level football in the French League. His skill was demonstrated in the World 5 match, where he was able to easily bypass Team Reign's defense, scoring on them with very little effort. His next weapon is also pretty obvious, being explosive speed, first shown in chapter 90 of the manga. Loki's speed is his defining weapon, being able to explosively take off from a neutral position and reach top speed very quickly. This speed is so devastating that Isagi had no chance to react despite Loki being directly in front of him. In addition to this acceleration, he has the endurance to maintain the speed for an extended duration. Since Loki can angle his dribble, he is almost able to dribble as wide as his stride, which combined with his speed makes him an almost unstoppable opponent. His speed is by far the best in Blue Lock, far surpassing that of Chigri, Shido, and Zantetsu as he was able to effortlessly overcome all of Rin's team by himself. Loki also has a branch scale off of this weapon which is called Second Gear Godspeed, first shown in chapter 91 of the manga. And no, not that second gear. But I do find it funny how they both increase speed after using it. But anyways, when Loki is confronted with someone who can read his direction, he is able to shift into an even higher gear of speed to burst past him before they can stop him, and he used this to completely evade Rin when he was intercepted. But as of right now, those are all of the weapons in Loki's arsenal as of right now in the story. We will most likely see more of him in this match, simply due to PXG currently playing against Bastard Munchen, and with Charles in play, I wouldn't be surprised if Loki comes in just to see how ready Charles is to be his passer. And the last of the professional players that we have seen is Jimpachi Ego. Now Ego was confirmed to be a professional soccer player, someone who even the number one striker considers to be his rival, meaning he must have a large array and set of weapons in his arsenal, right? No. No he doesn't. As of the current chapters, we have absolutely no idea as to what Ego's playstyle, archetype, or weapons could be. However, we can speculate and I do have a pretty good idea of at least one weapon. Starting off with his playstyle, I believe that he would have the archetype of the Raumdeuter or the Space Investigator. The reason for this is due to Isagi's archetype being the Raumdeuter as well, and Isagi and Ego have shown to have many similarities when relating to soccer. Now, a Raumdeuter's main function is to drift infield and find pockets of space in which to thrive. They are essentially players who locate dangerous areas on the pitch and use the unoccupied space to create confusion amongst the opposing backline. Now, for a weapon that he most likely possessed, I'm more than confident to say that Ego has Metavision, and this is essentially confirmed in chapter 204 of the manga. When Isagi is explaining the concept of Metavision to Noel Noah, he 
says that he has heard this concept before, specifically from Ego. And way back in chapter 26 of the manga, Ego explains to Isagi the formula for a goal. And during this explanation, we see this grid-like pattern appear around the pitch, with the gridded avatars and pop-ups of the character appearing in Isagi's vision. This is exactly how Metavision is shown later on in the series. Now you could argue that this is simply Isagi envisioning this and subconsciously interpreting Metavision. However, I believe that this is Ego confirming that he himself has this ability, simply due to him having to know what this is in order to give this vision an explanation. But again, that's simply Simply my speculation as to Jinpachi Ego's arsenal. It's pretty likely that we will get the reveal of his player archetype and arsenal in the future, but these are again just my predictions. But anyways, that was every single currently shown pro player's arsenal in Blue Lock as of right now in the story. Looking at the script, this is my longest video to date, so I really hope you guys did enjoy it. Also, rereading the manga to get evidence for this video, I never realized how much of the anime left out the World 5 map. And it's honestly a bit of a crime that they did this, so I would encourage every single person to go to chapter 90 and read the World 5 matchup if you have not seen it because the anime did it incredibly dirty. But as for the question of the video, who is your favorite professional player in Blue Lock? Mine personally is Chris Prince, but please let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Thank you all for watching, like and subscribe for more content just like this.